Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Com, and it's been a year since Canon announced their first foray into the full-frame mirrorless world with the introduction of the Canon EOS R. So how does that camera hold up a year later and what does the future hold for Canon as a camera company? Well, we're gonna find out my thoughts right now. First, we need to take a quick look back at some of the top level specs of the Canon EOS R. This was a completely new designed camera that sports a 30.3 megapixel sensor that was found in the Canon 5D Mark IV. The EOS R incorporated a brand new larger mount that's built for the future and accepts Canon's RF glass. Hell, with a $99 adapter, you can use all your EF glass seamlessly. It had an ISO range of 100 to 40,000 with the ability to shoot eight frames a second. But those eight frames come with an asterisk that it can only shoot eight frames a second in single focus. In continuous focus, you could get five frames a second or three frames per second with tracking priority. And when you're snapping off images, you're not exactly seeing a blackout free viewfinder. You're seeing the last frame show up for a split second, giving you the feeling you have a full view of your subject, but you don't. There's a 3.69 million dot OLED EVF along with a fully articulating touchscreen LCD. Dual pixel AF was incorporated for both stills and video, and speaking of video, you had crippled and cropped 4K. My initial thought after using the Canon camera the first time was, I liked it as a first full frame mirrorless camera from Canon. I loved the feel of the body. Canon smartly went with a much larger DSLR sized body for the EOS R. The image quality matched that of the more expensive 5D Mark IV. The autofocus seemed accurate, the EVF was fantastic and more accurate in my opinion than the Sony's at the time. The touch and drag AF on the screen made it super simple to traverse edge to edge across 5,000 plus focusing points. The battery life seemed to be perfectly fine. And finally, the RF glass was revolutionary. A 28 to 70 F2 zoom along with super fast 1.2 lenses. What else could you ask for? The answer, a lot. You could ask for a lot more. Here we are a year out from the EOS R and honestly, it hasn't aged very well. It was already behind the curve when it was announced and a year later, it's slipping further and further down the wrong side of the slide. Professional Canon shooters are not replacing their 5D Mark IVs or 1DX Mark IIs with EOS Rs. Now I know a few who have picked up the R for silent shooting and tethering in the studio, but no one is using this camera anywhere near action. I've shot basketball with it and the three or five frames per second with the herky-jerky view isn't conducive to getting the shot. Hell, even Canon's EOS M6 Mark II's tech is slightly better in some ways, even though it's a cropped body. And with all that being said, they had to start somewhere. Sony's had a five year plus head start in the full frame mirrorless world and even their initial offerings were pretty bad. In fact, they, they, they sucked hard. With the EOS R, it seems like Canon wasn't sure what they should do. Should they go all in on mirrorless or keep milking the DSLR cow a little longer? The problem is if they keep milking that cow, the udders are going to fall off, AKA photographers are going to jump ship if they haven't already done so. The biggest thing Canon got right is the RF mount and glass. Canon may not have the bodies just yet, but they have some of the best mirrorless glass around. From a revolutionary and inventive 28 to 70 F2 to the 50 and 85 1.2, and now a Hebrew Trinity of a 15 to 35 2.8 IS, 24 to 70 2.8 IS, and a 70 to 200 2.8 IS. Canon's glass is fast, sharp, and forward thinking. The next step they need to take is to consolidate their mounts across the board like Sony has already done and Nikon will probably be doing. The EOS M mount is DOA and should be replaced with an RF mount. They need to launch a mirrorless Rebel with inexpensive RF glass and win the consumer market. The technology is there. They've developed and implemented some of it already. They're just moving way too slow. You need to be nimble and adaptive and up to this point, they've been super slow to do any of those things. Here's what needs to happen on the pro side. They need to just release their 1DX Mark III DSLR to keep their old sports shooters happy. 
Then, never release another full-frame DSLR again. The 5D Mark V must be a mirrorless version. They need to try and replicate the success of the revolutionary 5D Mark II. The pros that haven't jumped ship yet are impatiently waiting for Canon to catch up to the future. Shit, by the time a mirrorless 1DX version comes out, Sony will have out their second pro sports camera, the A92, which puts them at least six years ahead of Canon. But it's not all doom and gloom. I've been saying this for a while now. I think Canon is the sleeper of the bunch. Yes, it feels like they've been asleep behind the wheel for a while, but I think 2020 is going to be the start of Canon's revitalization in the eyes of their users. I think they will keep pumping out class-leading RF glass that defies past conventional norms. I think you will see a 5D Mark V Pro mirrorless camera followed by a 1DX mirrorless version. But will it be too little too late? Will it be crippled in some stupid way? Only Canon can answer those questions. And guess what? I think only time will tell. What do you think is going to happen with Canon? Are you still waiting or have you already jumped ship? Let me know down below. And there you have it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.